are going live. I think we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, November 30th, 20, November 30th, 2023, Kenoka Park, California at Tulane Live headquarters. Today we got Danger Dan in the house from Danger Dan's Talk Shop. Yeah, we got a little intro music going on right now. He's tuning in from Texas. Texas. And we're going to talk bikes, life, good times, classic cars, travels. He's been all over the world. So, boys, what's going on? And this episode is brought to you by Eagle Rider Motorcycle Rentals and Tours. Don't forget to check out TulaneLife.com. With the Eagle Rider tab, you can book a trip and save some dough while you're at it. What's up, boys? Well, I got to tell you, I can't wait to get into this with Dan because uh, Galen and I were uh, – having a great time in Santa Fe, New Mexico with this guy riding motorcycles, hanging out with Harley. I mean, it was, this guy is a fun guy. I wish he was in the studio, but you guys get to meet him and we'll get to have some fun. We'll get him in the studio one day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he was planning on doing that this trip, but uh, got hung up on a Sherpa ride or something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> so I don't know if you got to see our video yesterday. It was really awesome. Uh, you know, it's our, what'd you call it? Uh, great, the um, great places to go. Just or? our top rides of 2023. But that we ended didn't, up. You didn't have that on the thumbnail. You said great rides, rides of a lifetime. Rides, rides of a lifetime. Of a lifetime. Yep. You know, but we picked our top five. I thought you said six, but maybe five. I think we did six and ended up sitting in front of the camera for like an hour. So we're so doing two, two separate ones. Yeah, there's two separate ones, but go back and check out the first one. It's really great on our youtube channel but I, I liked how we did that because we were talking about you didn't really realize until we sat down and started thinking about how many first time things we did i mean we took our daughters out for the first time we went to canada so we went into a different country for the first time on the bikes um you know the loneliest highway is the first time we've been on that sucker in 14 degree weather so i i thought the mashup was good and and when the next one comes out as well i think we're gonna have some good content there too you know it's really cool about doing that we're sitting here talking about it and you really actually when the trip is over and by the time it's edited and then you watch it and then another trip happens and if you you lose your memory of what went down on this trip but when we sit here and we were talking about it yep. it brought it all back it was life. rad even it was a bit time intensive going through just terabytes and terabytes of footage from all these past trips but same thing going through it revisiting certain sections of the video certain sections of the trip just kind of kicking back and looking through memories and putting it all in one it's a good time it makes Galen, me want to go back what are you drinking bud uh i am drinking the enjoy by 1031 hazy ipa from stone house brewing good man huh. you've got some liquid blood. i'm a water boy today I'm a water boy too. Got my aquapana right here, you know. Um, so, so look, I mean, like we would go to this great event. We're riding around the mountains of, of Santa Fe and New Mexico. This guy, before we get started, rolls in on this chopper, right? And I'm going, holy shit, he's a big dude. Like, and, and how's this guy going to ride? And what, like, all, and then you meet him and he's like, he's a big guy, but he's just the salt of the earth. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> we had a really good time busting each other's balls and just hanging out, having a good time and getting to know him as a person. And <clears throat> then to watch him ride as we were up in the front of the pack and the rest of the people were kind of behind, you know, Matt Swedlin let her loose a little bit a couple times. And man, we just all went. And I mean, Dan was right up on uh, fast Eddie's tail and they were John at each other. I, it was just a really good time. And uh, really cool that motorcycles actually brought us together with him. Well, uh, yeah. And it's, that, a, it's an interesting thing. Right? It I seems mean. to do that. And the really cool thing is everyone that rode, whether it was Kaylin Thorey and Maggie Hicks, uh, there Justin. Was Harley Drew, uh, all the boys from Harley, and, and they all know how to ride. And everyone rode really good. And it was, uh, we had a lot of people, but it was a good ride. And Dan is this big guy, and he was on the what's that? The electric King? glide, electric glide, With uh, the highway seat, King. you yep. know, and it puts you up like this. So he was now he's up here, just ripping that thing down the highway, huge, yeah, and just <laughs> bobbing around and just watching him. And I put a post up with him, uh, and it's done pretty well, but. Some guy commented, I can't believe Harley's now 
putting their baggers into electric motorcycles. And I'm like, dude, it's an electric light. It's, it's not an <laughs> electric bike. That's so without funny. further ado, we Wait, should bring this cat in. We definitely need to bring him in, but go check our YouTube channel. Watch the last drop that we had. It's great. And thanks for the support at TulaneLife.com. Get there. Go get your merchandise for Christmas and the holidays. And in hey, parts. we'll help you out. So without further ado, we got the one and only Danger Dan, the man. What's happening? So Yo. He's, he's got some water, too, it looks like. I do. What is happening? Dude, just enjoying Texas right Texas. now. Dang. Wish we were there with you right now. You need to come out. We will. So, hey, cool. uh, I was kind of looking through some stuff today, and I got I got a little dirt on you, so I'm just going to get this over with first. <laughs> you know T TJ, the honorary one? I do. We call him the ordinary one. He calls us too lame life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Too lame yeah, I was life. Talk too lame life. So, yeah, we met up with him a couple of years ago and, and have done uh, just had a lot of fun with him throughout, you know, some of the events we've seen each other at. And I saw a picture of him with the chopper and you. Uh, so I'm like, no way. These two know each other. How does what a small world is that? And so I called yeah, I mean, him to talk. Go ahead. I was going to say he's right next to me over in Arkansas. You know, he's not yep. that far away. <laughs> But he uh, he shared some stories about you and just, you know, the same feelings that I have and Lance have about you. Just what a great guy you are. And uh, he he's uh, an admirer as well. So that's that's he's pretty cool. Full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he told me he beat you on the straight on the drag strip. Oh, I bet he did say that. <laughs> Wait, did I see a, a video of you on the back of a bike? Going uphill with someone is was that? Oh yeah, yeah, that was Johnny Hawk in Tennessee at the motorcycle music revival. Do uh -huh. you did like an uphill. uphill? Yeah, it was that <laughs> was a steep one. But I I was most impressed because you had really no hands holding on. You had one with a beer in it, and you rode up the whole hill. <laughs> yeah, I was on the back like seat. Dude. He was in control. Yeah, like a buck and bronc. Just I was just no. along for the ride. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, you guys so, need to come out there to Tennessee. That's a great event. The riding around Tennessee is great. The music at that event. I uh, mean, we bring our dirt bikes, our kids, the mini bikes. There's a river running through the place. Loretta's property is just fucking beautiful. Wow, oh, Loretta Lynn's. Yes. They used to do the motocross. Or they do the motocross stuff there. Yeah, they year. still do. Yeah. Yeah. So you have two kids, right? I do. He told me that they're rippers on dirt bikes. They're they're rippers on everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How oh, old yeah. are they? Eight and ten. Oh yeah, they're little rippers. Yeah, little rippers at, uh, and probably little monsters. They're they're feral. They don't wear <laughs> well, shoes. He also told me they're very respectful of the adults. Like they'd slow down around them, and then once they were away from them, then they'd really get into it. But he said they're. He said their dad's done a great job of rain of raising them. So well done, pops and mom. I told you he's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so how is that having two kids like that and being gone like on some of the travels you're on? Oh man, it's definitely tough. Uh, you know, it's not the easiest part of the gig, that's for sure. Uh, but it's cool when they're still stoked to see me when I show up after the end of a trip. Um, right, right. You know, oh, he's on the live right now. They're uh, they're there not far from riding right with me. You know, they're gonna be Real, they're gonna be, be cool. right along my side. Nice, nice, and I I could say nice because I get to ride alongside my son right now all the time. That's awesome. That's so great. I bet you Definitely enjoy great. that. I bet he enjoys that. Yeah, we have a good time. Did you see that last comment? Oh, look at the look at the comment on the screen. It's from Traveler. It says, "What's up, Stephanie? We know TJ can't type." Yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. What, what what the hell was that Sherpa thing you were doing? How long were you gone? Where were you? You're riding bikes all over the place. Oh man, yeah. So my friend Bear's got a company called Motorcycle Sherpa. 
and he does tours in India, Nepal, and Mongolia. And so this one, I flew to Kathmandu, and we hopped. It was about me and 15 other guys hopped on Himalayas and rode Himalayas up the mountains. And it's like 10 days on the bike. It, it's incredible. That's gnarly. I mean, traveling overseas, getting on motorcycles and riding around the mountains like that. Gnarly. It is. But it, it, is. it looked like, I mean, it's not like you were on paved roads either. No, no, by far. No, no. And really the paved roads over there just mean the traffic goes faster, but yet not all the traffic. You know, you'll be on like one of their highways and you got big trucks running each direction going 80 miles an hour. And then some lady pulls out into the middle of the road, pushing a cart with some food and her baby on it, you know, and you just got to slow down. You know, it's, it's wild. What about eating? Yeah. I was going to say, how was the, the food? Oh, dude, it's, it's almost like a food tour while you're there. I mean, the really? food's incredible the whole way. It took me the first time I wasn't as thrilled about it. Uh, but, man, I, I really enjoyed it more this time than I had the past time I've been over there. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of Momo's. They do a lot of chicken and rice and pork. You know, the, the chicken's funny because they just, like, they cut it into pieces with a big knife, bones and all, throw it in the fryer, you know, the splinters and everything. It's, uh, you know, it's. Really? They eat a little <laughs> differently over there. So you got you to be careful chewing on it. Everything's got bones and they don't bother wow. taking any of them out. I had a, I had a niece that served a Mormon mission in uh, Indonesia and she ate at a place called uh, Scooby-Doo <laughs> and it was all dog. Oh, for real. For real. Dude. I the don't know. The restaurant was called Scooby-Doo. I don't know that I've ever eaten a dog. I, I don't know that I ever haven't eaten a dog either, but it's never been brought to my attention. You know, when I was in uh, South America, uh, the guinea pigs were real popular down there. You know, you just yeah. see huh. guinea pigs spinning on the, the pit next to the side of the road. And I intended That's to try cool. one, but I, it never, the, the time was never right. Uh, right, right. Yeah, Josh was just saying something about guinea pigs. Food, right? you know? I'm not scared. <laughs> Right. Uh, you don't sh you don't uh, strike me as someone that gets scared. I mean, you tried to get me to try that little. Uh, what did you get? A slushy snow cone thing. Oh yeah. And you were yeah, eating that, and you gave someone else cone. a taste, and they were like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was a spicy snow cone. I'd never had one of those before. <laughs> so had you ever done a trip like uh the santa fe trip that we all went on where we met have you ever done anything like that before yes yeah, i mean i did something similar uh i mean i don't know i mean that was unique it had a you know that was different than most of the trips i do by a long shot uh but i definitely have been on similar trips before you know pre-planned hotels booked you know, a bunch of people I haven't met before. And by the end of the trip, we're all fucking hugging and giving each other shit. And, right. you know, breeding friendships that will last a long time. Totally. 100%. That's the cool thing about motorcycles. Well, it's the cool thing about us. We're just cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, then I ask you about Grant uh, Peterson. What about you? You asked Grant about me, or you're asking no, me about Grant? No, I asked Grant. you about Grant. You said, "Yeah, I know Grant." Uh, tell him I did the Texas Born Free for him. So I shared it with him. I told him. <laughs> did I say that? Yeah, I'm just teasing you. Oh yeah, that so was I a good show, did. man. We had a lot of fun at Texas Born Free. Was yeah. it a good turnout? It really was, man. That venue is great. The people that showed up were great. Uh, there was a lot of really sick choppers that came out of the woodworks. It was a, it was quite the collection of bikes on the grass. All right. Uh, he says, ask Dan about getting hit on the Pan America at TMMR. Mm -hmm. What about it? <laughs> I got hit. I, I didn't get hit. I ran into a truck. 
on my Pan America. Right mm-hmm. out of the gate, two weeks after I bought it, right after I got it painted. Uh, the first time I got to take it on the dirt when I finally like decided I really liked it. And then I ran into a truck, bounced right off of it, and uh, you know, got up, took off running, and uh, yeah, picked it up and rode off. Fixed it with a beer can and rode to South America with it. No way. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny because I remember seeing the post of that Pan America with the flames on it laying down in the weeds. Yep. Before that's like a year or so before I ever met you. So the past yeah, crossed. Yeah, I did that. Fast in, forward, boom. In 21, I think, is when I did that. Yeah. So. I mean, think about that for a minute. You, you roll up on a chopper. You've got, you know, kind of that vibe and feel. But now you're on a Pan America. Talk because you've been on dirt your whole life as well, right? I mean, I've definitely enjoyed riding. You know, I went. I hadn't ridden on the dirt for a long time until my kids had gotten to an age where I wanted to get them mini bikes. Yeah. And as soon as I got them mini bikes, I was like, "Fuck, I got to get me a bike," you know. And right. So I got a dirt bike and then another dirt bike and then built a dirt bike. I built a uh, a Sportster into a dirt bike, raced the Mint 400, blew it up, turned it into an adventure bike, rode that around for about a year or two. Uh, it, that's actually now in the Harley Davidson Museum in Milwaukee. But Really? Yeah, and then all of a sudden Harley decides to put out an adventure bike. So it was just like – it just matched up. I was on, I mean, I was fixing to buy one regardless of Harley having one or not. And then it just, you know, it just happened that way. I, you know, and I was on the fence until I saw the, uh, the promo video that they did with Jason Momoa, like, you know, reminding everybody of the heritage of the company and how they've always built adventure bikes. And, and I was like, fuck it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I'm buying. Well, I called my local dealer up and I was like, I want the first one that shows up in Texas. And I got it. And I immediately took it apart, broke some things, painted it, and then ran into a truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, we took him out and uh, had a few days in the dirt. And I I mean, I, I grew up on dirt bikes. I was pretty damn impressed with that machine. I I couldn't believe how nimble for that size of bike, how nimble it and and how it handled. Unfortunately, we had a guy break a leg, but, uh, you know, that ended his trip. But Josh and I got an extra two days out of it. And I was talking to a, a guy today at, at Harley online store. And he said, what do you, what do you guys do? And I told him, cause I was checking in on some orders that we'd made. And we got into this whole discussion about what would, what would the, that second bike be in your garage and or that first bike be in it? It ended up, we talked about the Pan America. I'd, I'd have two sets of wheels. I'd do soft bags. I'd have some street tires that I could just go play around on the street and then some 50-50s. And I, you, I mean, you're set. You don't need another bike. They're great bikes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, definitely I mean, we had a great. Chopper. Yeah, choppers are... Interesting. I got to ride one. <laughs> one or definitely ride. One. Oh, fuck. Is that you? I lost you there. Josh? No, that, yeah, that mean. was me. That's him. <laughs> is that on? Is that TJ calling you? No, that was Carrie Brobeck from Choppers Magazine. Aha, uh-huh, perfect. But I'm back. Yeah, tune in, man. He can tune in and talk to you. So Traveler says that you have, uh, you're the guy on the, uh, Dan is the poster child for a Harley ADV. Not bad. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm the so poster you, child they want. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know, man. Handsome, debonair gentleman like you, for sure. Oh, well, I appreciate that. No, but I really enjoy that bike. I mean... I, you know, before that, I was riding around on my 59 panhead chopper, and then I have a 1977 XT500. So that was quite a jump, you know, like all the technology yeah. was, you know, I didn't even use any of the settings or buttons for the first six months. I mean, I would just 
turn the traction control off and turn the anti-lock brakes off and go ride. Um, but that bike is fucking fun and it's fast as shit. And it, it can, it's taken me a lot of wild places. I mean, just that first year from Tennessee, I went to red river, New Mexico, rode around the mountains there for Memorial day. Then I rode, <clears throat> I rode the Colorado BDR to Sturgis in 21 by myself. I started off with a friend and he didn't make it, but a couple of days. And then from Sturgis, I rode across Wyoming, did off road through the big horns. Uh, Big Bear Pass has this sick road. It's called like the devil's asshole that goes up the opposite side and it's all crazy dirt. And you can look back at Bear Tooth. And then I rode down really? into why uh, with Yellowstone, the north entrance to Yellowstone. There's tons of trails over there. And then I went and saw the guys at Grand Teton Harley Davidson. I think they put some tires on or maybe we put a new battery on. And then I rode across Idaho and went to went through the Salmon National Forest down trails. I wouldn't even go ride a dirt bike down, like going over rock slides, corduroy roads. And I mean, it was fucking wild what I, where I took that bike the first year. And, uh, you know, then it ended up taking me all the way to the bottom of South America. So yeah, it's been pretty fucking good for me. How many miles do you have on that thing? 30,000. Nice. That's yeah. good. I think there was 27,000. Yeah, it was 27,000 when I got back from South America. I think that that's, trip was 18,000 by itself. Wow. Really? I mean, we we had a great time riding them. We went out on a probably a three, four day trip was it supposed to be. I mean, we went through the desert flat sand up over the mountains. Once we got in the mountains, beautiful sunny day, and there happened to be a, a shaded corner that had just a hard pack ice sheet across the whole thing. Once I got on that, it was oh, fuck. not a high speed thing, you know, just bike was gone. Boom. You know. But yeah, it didn't take going said, very fast. That's a big, heavy bike. Yeah, I, I said, keep going, guys. I'll see you later. You know, and they, I wanted them to finish the trip. You know, it was too good. Yeah. Well, it was, it was, uh, broke your leg. It was a very, very interesting like, trip to say the least. Yeah. What's that? So you broke your leg like what below the knee? Yeah, I broke my fib and tib on on the left leg. I, it, it was it. my leg was strong, strong enough to rip the saddlebag off the metal saddlebag. Other than that, I, like I would have walked like away. Boots, uh, half half height moto boots, so not really. Those were like yeah. soft, right? That they're like the Garnier ankle. Yeah, they're right like above they're the, the ankle. Yeah, ankle boot. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get the other boot in time. So if I had a, a full boot on, maybe it would have been a different story. But I, I think yeah. if if we, I mean. Those cans carry so much stuff. Yeah. If you if you had maybe a soft pack or something, because we weren't we're only gone for a couple of days, right? You could have just used a soft pack, yeah. and I think you would have been fine. But we all got on it, and usually, if we're on the Harleys, our road glides when we come around a corner and it's we're on dirt and there's something, we usually stop and kind of take a look at it first. But um, we just kind of went for it and. I was locked up fully and sliding down and the guy, and I was about to take the dude out in front of me. So I just, I found a berm and I just like bink just parked it so nice and soft. And, and then I hear in the calm, Oh, I'm going down. Oh, I broke my leg. And I'm like, Oh shit. Now you can barely walk to go back up and help the guy. That was the calmest. I broke my leg. I've yeah. ever heard from anyone. Oh, Hey guys. I, uh, I think I broke my leg. Yeah. You know, nice and simple. But I mean, you know, when you're out on dirt, you know, things happen all the time. And it's like, you go down and it's not, maybe not even a fast down or, but he was, he, at least he was not to the, to the place where he's like, I don't want to ride these things. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll get back on that bike. And that's yeah. that, that's the attitude mm -hmm. because I, again, they were pretty impressive to me. I had a, I had a prototype, so I didn't get the, the, leveling adjustment as josh isn't quite as tall as i am so i gave him the bike that i had initially nice to guy. let him uh you know experience that but i i just couldn't believe you know after being on like a i don't know 
I last bike I think I had was a 450. I can't remember what it was, but which is so light and nimble and a four stroke and just ripping to the, you're on this, this bike that's pretty heavy. That's just, it, it thoroughly impressed me on the dirt and the sand and you could just lay back and just rip, let it go. I mean, we were, we were flying across the desert floor on these things and it was just, it was amazing. I loved it. I'd have a set. If that's, my, if I had a second bike, that's the bike that'd be in my garage. I would even consider having that as the yeah. only bike the yep. way hot bike did it yeah with the subframe and a little st style fairing so what do you got going on out there you got a t-shirt shop you got your paint and you you line up artists for paint and and you know what what the hell's going on out there <laughs> well i have a podcast uh i do something similar to this without the video aspect uh weekly danger dance talk shop you know, available on all podcast apps. And I started that, I think it was six, maybe seven years ago now. And okay. when I started it, um, you know, I came up with the idea of doing a t-shirt subscription program where I feature different motorcycle shops around the country. So every month now I feature a different motorcycle shop. We do a one-off limited print that goes out to all my subscribers uh, comes with a postcard, tells people about the shops, where they're located, what they specialize in, and how they can get a hold of them. And, uh, you know, and then I live on a farm here. I got some cows that we work. Uh, there's there's plenty of stuff to do when I'm home, actually. The honey-do list, you know, it grows the longer I'm gone. Uh, I'm sure you do believe that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, so I the just, farm I life. get into crazy things, you know. I just like to try new stuff. Uh you know, I've ridden my chopper from coast to coast many a times. Uh, I go to events. I've uh, been riding a lot of dirt lately. I fucking love that. Uh, do some racing. I've done some flat track race. I built a hooligan bike a few years ago, gave that away. I built that sports through into dirt bike. You know, and that really helped the transition onto that big adventure bike was riding a sports dirt as a dirt bike because it's obviously not that. Uh, but that was a good transition into the Pan America. And since I've gotten the Pan America, it's just opened up so many more uh, possibilities on where I can go and uh, take people and explore. So someone commented uh, that you were on Jace's podcast. You know him? I do. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he, uh, he's not far away from me. Yeah. We were at his place two years ago. Yeah. I think it was two years ago. So Wachahachi. Wachahachi. Um and and we That's have to it. credit watch him. Like, hatchy. Yeah, watch the hatchy. Um he was I think he was probably our first podcast that we got on with him when we started three and a half years ago. He came out, he was really talking with uh Lance Jr. and uh and he met us debonair men and so he's <laughs> like hey let's jump on something so our first two podcasts were with him and a group called four for the road that this four for the road was some army guys and and military guys i should say not just army um that were in clubs that were trying to break the notion of uh you know you don't have to call someone to cross state lines and let's just be regular club and be good and um so they were trying to be more progressive, I guess. But those were the first two podcasts we had done. And then if you go back and look at our first podcast that we did or live, should I say, that we did? I live. did that. I did, hey, I did that today. I went back and looked at y'all. The only video I watched was y'all's first live video. Lance is over there fucking with good. the blinds and shit. You guys are moving the table <laughs> yeah. around. Did yeah. you laugh your ass off? I was our like, nose I think hairs are up a long the... way since then. <laughs> our nose hairs are up in the camera. I mean, it was uh, so disgusting. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, it was I really mean, cool. you got to start somewhere, you know. Like it, right? You're not going to be a pro we, right out of the gate, right? We didn't know any better. We were just like, let's go for it. I think there was a couple too where we like I was just a human tripod holding an iPhone for like 45 minutes <laughs> in the corner. Just shaking, <laughs> trying to, you know. 
Yeah, I mean, oh. it would be nice to throw in a video aspect to what I do, but I got to find the right guy because I'm not going to do the video. Uh, it, you know, it, and fuck, it's just a lot, man. I mean, this is, this, I'm glad that there are people like y'all doing this, you know, because yeah. people do want to, they want to see it. They want to see the conversations. They want to see the emotions on the people's faces. And uh, this right. is the best way to get it. Well, that's kind of why we don't just like, we've talked about this a few times. If we were to produce something, you know, we'd have way better sound quality. We wouldn't have streaming issues, but we kind of like doing this because you've got comments that are coming in. We're interactive with the group. You can be interactive with the group. They get to see you as a character that like you're saying, they can see your face and your mannerisms. And, um, but you know, we've just chosen to do it this way and then we'll push it out to all the streaming services so people can certainly listen to it. But our, our thing is really interaction with the group of people. And then what's really kind of been cool <laughs> over the last couple of years is now the people that are on these every Thursday, they're actually interacting with each other. So not even with us, they're just talking with, hey, good to see you again. Nice. You know, it's it's been kind of cool to watch that. Nice. Yeah. So you guys have been doing this format for two years now? Two years. Yeah. yeah. Different studio, different, you know, warehouse, wherever we were. But this is this is pretty new. This is like what? This is a couple this months. Two months. What, three, or? four. Yeah. yeah, two months. Huh. Trust two me. Months all the way. That's yeah. right. So you've been all over the world. We recently you know this year went to canada we want to get across into europe we haven't done the the adv or the sherpa dirt rides like you what what's your is is there a country that you've been to that you enjoyed the most or enjoy a lot oh yeah yeah and you guys are real fucking close no excuses mexico is right there ah <laughs> and it is so good the tequila the tacos the women the beaches the roads the sand it's got it all dude it's right there wow so for you what san felipe or or what oh man i like san miguel de adende oaxaca is amazing uh even further down south like gonzaga bay on the baja um yep Mazatlan, I got a good friend there named Ruli who's got a motorcycle shop right next to the fucking Corona factory. You go down there, you buy the beers. That's all they sell is beer. And they give them to you in like a plastic bag like you're at the grocery store. And then they have an ice machine that they, they fill your plastic bag up with ice so you can take your beers away cold on ice. I like uh, it. <laughs> Mazatlan's great. Zacatecas is beautiful. Uh, Monterey is fucking really beautiful. Saltillo. It's like a cool little spot outside of Monterey. Uh, yep. Copper Canyon is a fucking gorgeous place at the bottom of the Sierra Madres. It's a huge canyon that you can ride down into. Uh, that's a real adventure. So I've you're done in Mexico. Most of that on my man. chopper. I've ridden the Pan America through there as well. Wow. Do well, what? I got to talk to my buddies to get. I got to talk my buddies to get down there. I mean, it's. Well, uh, I've done a lot of fishing down in Mexico on the Sea of Cortez side and the other side, the Pacific side, but uh, never really ridden a motorcycle down there. And I, I, I want to get him to San Felipe, at least get into that area. You know, I'll tell you what, after his description, I don't think I need any more talking. I'm right. ready to go. I mean, I'm down for that. Well, my son went down with his buddy <laughs> down into, into Mexico and they did a taco run and did the whole thing. They took their, I think they took their FXRs. Uh, one dyno one fxr maybe something like yeah. that they did a couple taco shops because they that's their big thing is checking tacos out so let me ask you this when you went down there was it kind of a group thing or going with a group of dudes or rolling solo what kind of uh the first time i went solo i just rode down to san felipe from uh oh from yuma i mean i rode yep. from texas but i crossed around yuma and then the next time I went, I was my friend Kickstart Mike. I think he was like 66 years at the time. He was on his 66 shovel head. I was on my 59 pan head. And we rode straight across. Or I guess we went down from Arizona. And then we crossed over and did Copper Canyon. And it was 
fucking incredible. And then I went back with the group of guys three years ago, and we went in from Texas, like at Presidio Big Bend area, uh, to Monterey, and then we we went down to this place called Real de Catorce, where you like ride through this old mining tunnel. Uh, and we were all on choppers then too, and we did the Devil's Backbone, and it's like it's in between Durango and Mazatlan. It's like I don't know. I think it's like. 120 miles with like 1600 turns it takes like eight hours to do it's Gee, fucking wow. incredible and Is then we take a ferry pain? across take main the main a ferry from the mainland all the way to the bottom of the baja and then ride up the whole baja wow do you encounter a lot of dirt roads no hmm no. this is the federal i mean when you go down into the Copper Canyon, like the road is missing in some places because it's just been washed out. Uh, but for the most part, it's all paved. You know, there's a spot going to Real de Gatorce where you got to go like 30 miles down this fucked up cobblestone road. First time I did that, like some lady had given me some peyote on the side of the road. And, you know, I was like fucking using my third eye to make it down this fucking thing. We go through this tunnel. <laughs> I realized that the cobble road had like knocked my headlight out. So I don't have any lights and there's just like swinging light bulbs inside this tunnel. And then there's a turn and fuck. I mean, I had my third eye going and then you pop out in like an old Indiana Jones film. There's like canvas covered fucking vendors selling tacos and trinkets and shit. And you're in this old silver mining town in the middle of these fucking mountains. And the roads are all made out of like, this mosaic tile stonework that's just fucking incredible. And it's all like 200 years old. Pretty wild. I'll tell you what, your boy, your boy, Dan wants a formal peyote review. Okay. You want one right now? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, well, I didn't take a ton, you know, I did take enough that when the guys realized that I was going to be high and they weren't going to be high, they all got real nervous. And one of the dudes busted out a fucking deodorant thing because he smuggled a bunch of fucking mushrooms in there. So then he passes out mushrooms to everybody. And I'm like, dude, we don't even know where the fuck we're going. You guys are following me, and I definitely don't know where I'm going. And we get to this cobble road, and it's, it is like a bunch of baby head rocks. And they're all like concreted. They're, they're all tight and strong, but, you know, we're on fucking rigid bikes, you know? So immediately, like, I don't know, two miles in, my chopper just quits running. And I, I stop and I just take a step back and I'm just like, what could possibly be wrong? And, and those guys all catch up and they're looking at me like, hey, we can't keep going. Our bikes are fucked up. I got four coils spraying at me, you know, this and that. And I'm just ignoring it. I'm like, I'm not having it. I'm way too high right now. And I just look at my bike like, what could possibly be wrong? And I go over there and I'm like, it's got to be a wire broke. You know, too much vibration. I find the wire immediately. I let a bunch of air out of my tires. And these guys are all talking about turning around. And I just get on my bike and take off. And I start going really fast. So once you get to like 60 miles an hour, like kind of levels out a little bit. And I do this for, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes. One of the guys catches up to me and he looks at me and points at his tank. And I'm like, Oh fuck. And I open the gas cap and I can just see the bottom of my gas tank. And I'm like, you know, this is not where we want to run out of fucking gas. It's like, all you can see is cactus and sand every direction. There's nothing. <laughs> and I swear to you, like fucking two minutes later, we come around a turn and there's a brand new fucking gas station right there. And, uh, we filled up with gas. And, and at that point we were like a mile or two away from this tunnel and we get to the tunnel and I didn't know any of this is really going to happen. And, and we get to the tunnel and there's like a, a car. We see a car going in there. And as we're pulling up, this lady like runs over and she's got paperwork. And I think she wants money or some shit. So I just flagged the boys like, just come on, let's go. And, and we, you know, we take off in this tunnel. And that's when I realized that my headlight doesn't work. There's no fucking lights in there. And when we make it to the other side, I realized that they were fixing to let the traffic come from the other way. Like they don't have a communication system. So the last guy in that line of cars told them on the other side, send the traffic and we're coming in on no. our fucking bikes. Uh, luckily, you know, we were going faster than the cars and we caught up to them, but that's what that lady was trying to tell us was don't fucking go. 
You know, there's fixing to be traffic no, coming geez. right at you. So I got a new so, title for the this ride. Danimal takes two lane life down to Mexico on a death run. Yeah, it's the Danimal peyote <laughs> run. I'm with the car. I, I don't know. There's no <laughs> yeah, death there run. you go. The peyote run, dude. Peyote we call run. it the desperado run. Aha. Uh -huh. We call it regular. There he goes, Dan, Daniel Mallow. Hey, the right chopper idea. run hey, in Mexico can't get more yeah. sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> it can. Well, it you can. know, you did see the movie that uh, Emilio Estevez and they went out, the Young Guns, wasn't yeah. it? Young, something, young Guns. Young Guns. And they were out doing some peyote up in the, up in the mountains, yeah. just freeing their soul and their spirit. <laughs> <clears throat> That's crazy, Dan. But how did you find the damn wire being loaded like that? Just you super. Yeah, it's, maybe you know, when you ride eye. that bike around as much as I do, the third eye, you know, it was definitely squeegeed. I was seeing from a different parallel universe. <laughs> uh, but, you know, when you ride that bike as much as I do, you know, you, you know, you just know. I mean, the vibrations, those little wire connectors right at the battery or at the coil, they yep. fucking break, you know. All the time. It's not my first rodeo. Right. Wow. So so Mexico's where we got to go. You know, there's another meet, good run. Need, there's a to run meet called you. the... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I would say there's another run called the Mezcal Moto Rally. And that's what started my trip to South America. I did that on the Pan America, and it was a race from Austin, Texas to Oaxaca, Mexico. And we did that in three days. And it was like, I think there was 20 of us. And the whole way they had like this like sheet of challenges to do where you could occur, you could get points. And so we'd leave Austin and then we'd all met up in Saltillo and stayed the night. There's a bunch of tacos and mezcal. Uh, and then we rode from Saltillo to San Miguel de Adende, which is fucking such a beautiful town and it was cool the whole way the guy that put this together like just had challenges you know like borrow a skateboard from a kid and ride it down this certain hill or go find this old dude named poncho wearing a giant hat sitting at the back of the bar at this place in monterey and he'll give you a clue and you go pick up a package from such and such and then we went from san miguel de adendo to oaxaca and it was it was just incredible, you know, riding with these guys. We're all kind of racing because you get points to be at the the end first. But there was also like, oh, you get extra points if you go three hours out of your way to this town that like harvest or specializes in harvesting cut flowers and go to the flower market and see all these fucking crazy flowers and bring them back to the party tonight. It was really good. Yeah, scavenger I didn't hunting. Any challenges. <laughs> but i like i i just have a i create my own challenges you know like those challenges were not near as difficult as the things i decided to do just because i that i ended up i wanted to find a topo chico you know they're bottled in monterey and there's this really beautiful colorful neighborhood with this all these small houses painted all these different colors and i was like i want to go there and have a topo and then come to find out it's the most dangerous city in monterey mexico Really, chilling on a sidewalk, drinking a fucking Nobo Chico. <laughs> well, look, I mean, you wouldn't have these adventures if you didn't have those two wheels, right? I mean, I would find other adventures. Yeah, you would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Have you ever been across coast to coast on a dirt road all the way the whole time? In the United States, no. I looked at, I looked at doing the Trans American Trail, but it looked pretty fucking boring. You know, a lot of like gravel roads and paved roads, and you know, I like a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. Well, I I think we need to plan a ride to Mexico like this year, twenty twenty four. Come on. We'll meet you like in uh, I don't know Yuma. Mexicali. We'll meet. No, we'll meet in Big Ben. We can meet there. Big Ben's the and spot. Do a, do a little shot. Yeah, then we can go through the Chihuahua Desert, have some Sotul. Um, 
you know, straight into Chihuahua. I got a bunch of friends that ride in Chihuahua. They would be so stoked if we showed up. So my wife's family is from Chihuahua, Chihuahua. From where? Beautiful country. Huh? From where? Chihuahua, where Chihuahua. Chihuahua, oh, from Chihuahua. Chihuahua City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. We went, we went there for a family reunion of a number of years back and I could not believe the mountains and the green hills. It was just, it was a beautiful place and great food. Um, we, we had a, we had a great time. So when we, when we'd go fishing uh, down like San Felipe, Sia Cortez, we would bring bags of candy. And so when we're sitting at the border trying to come across back into the country, uh, we would hand these kids and, and go through these small towns and, pull out a bag of candy and let them all run around it. It was just so fun to see them get so excited around a bag of candy. I mean, it's just, you yeah. know, the people there don't have everything that we have up here and to get some people caring for them a little bit. It, it meant a lot to those kids, you know? Yeah. See on a motorcycle, you don't have to wait in line. You just go straight right. to the you front. Go right up. You don't have to bring it back. I like that. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but if i if i could get if i could get him to san felipe i think he might enjoy sitting out there in that town in the restaurants that are facing the water having a cold beer and a taco and just relaxing I've been to, if you make it to san felipe to you do Vallarta. not need to stop i've been to puerto Vallarta and playa de carmen yeah but that, <laughs> so he he never wanted to go to mexico and then a couple of years ago we went for his daughter's birthday, we, we got a house in Puerto Vallarta. And, you know, it's one of these houses that comes with a, a butler and a maid and a, and a, and a bartender. And I liked it, but very, but very, yeah. <laughs> but very cheap for yeah, really you know, cheap. 8,000 square foot. I mean, that's right why I stay at, I just stay at the bars on the beach, you know, cause they have a butler and a bartender and a cook. Right. You know? <laughs> I just don't have a, a room and a shower, you know, you just got to sleep outside. Right. But who needs that when you're having tacos and beer? You don't. You don't. You yeah, been to Mexico, John? yeah, I've been to uh been to Cabo, but it was one of those all inclusive yeah. resort <laughs> no, deals. We went into the city a little bit, had some run ins and some sketchy shit, but it was we made it back home, you know. There's Cabo's not sketchy. That's like Southern California, dude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> No, so we, but I think it'd be fun to you ride the choppers, get a couple of your your dudes, and we meet or not, and then we just meet you and let's get down into. I'd like to show them San Felipe. That's one thing I'd like to do. San Felipe. We, to... we have some friends that go to Mexico every year on their baggers and their diners, and they do wheelies and get involved in all this stuff. Yeah. And he, one of them ran from the cops and got away from them in a just chase. Fucking. And the next year they were. Huh? The epic video of Sea Bear, fucking yeah, drifting through the traffic down the side. He stops and talks to the cop, and then fucking goes the other way. So good. Yeah. Well, the the year later they oh, did it again. Oh, it was or six it was, months later, and and C J Barham did it, and they were running, and he went over a thing and got caught and stayed in jail for like what six months, probably six months days. or six. Was it? Days. It was a while. I mean, it was. We had him on the show. He's they're good friends of ours, both Jeff and, and yeah. CJ. But I mean, so they were down there for their ride of life or whatever the hell they call it down there in like in December of last year, year and a half ago. And then the cops they, that's the one where C Bear, you see him talking to the cops and then he's gone. So yeah. they were ready for him the next year and or oh, the yeah. next event they had. And so these guys roll into town and the cops weren't gonna stop. They they had actually said that once they sea bear got away cj didn't so he's got away twice cj was in the back of the truck getting his ass beat by the cops he they got to the they got to the jail he was there for a couple days before he went to the prison they gave him gun charges now this kid doesn't carry at all but they gave him gun charges and then they he had to go in he was watching you have to watch the live a little bit but he had to he had to kind of make peace with people and then be kind of the the guy to keep things clean because he 
you know, they're in a room with four or five, six guys. And, and he said, there's guys under sheets that are doing their stuff. And it's just like, it was wild. <laughs> so we don't well, want to get, if you're going hey, to bring them, I, you know, if you're going to bring those guys, we can't meet up, you know, that's the no, no, we're definitely not bringing them. <laughs> no I, don't think, I don't think he'll go back either. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Yeah, I think you know, Rocky Point has movie. a really big uh, bike rally. Um, you know, one thing that would be cool that you guys could do easily is ride down the Baja, take the ferry over to Mazatlan for Mazatlan Bike Week. And Mazatlan is fucking wild, man. Yeah, it's right on the right on the ocean. Uh, tons of good places to eat. Uh, it's it's really fucking cool. And then that place well, just that fills I, up I have a little bit of a chip tooth from a Mazatlan bar. Really? Yeah. So you know. I'll tell you that story in person. You, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do that in person in the studio next time I come. Yeah. <laughs> we'll fucking... We'll, uh, we'll talk about our chip tooth stories. Yeah, I'm down with it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Mexico, we had a guy in here that comes in here once in a while and he always goes down to Mexico and it just apparently across the border from like Arizona and in that area, there's a couple of huge bike rallies. Yeah. Rocky point. Yeah. There's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I think the press out here, though, has really kind of dissuaded people from going into Mexico with all the killings and stuff they, they keep promoting. And I mean, oh, dude, this last trip we did, you know, each time I tell the guys, I'm like, don't look at the news. Don't fucking Google Mexico. Don't Google Monterey. I don't even tell them where we're going, because if they can look into it, it's not good. But right. it was right around the time they arrested El Chapo's son. And there was a bunch of fucked up shit going on in Sinaloa. I didn't tell the guys that that's where we were fucking going, but we were going like back roads, like straight down the cartel roads, essentially. And we're like a day away from getting there. And one of the dudes, my buddy Al pulls out his phone. He's like, we're almost in Sinaloa, like where we're not supposed to go. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to be there tomorrow, dude. You know, like that's exactly where we're going. I told you not to watch the news. Right. Well, I you think know, sometimes news, people look, the news is Go. not wrong. I mean, there is some fucked up shit going on down there, and you do take some chances. Uh, I think the Baja is about as safe as it could ever be. Um, once you get past the first, like, 60 miles at the border, you know? Like, that's where most of the shit happens to Americans is right on the border. You know, once you get in there, you're fucking good. Especially if you like riding two-lane roads, you know? Staying out of the city, staying off the major freeways. They've got some of the best fucking two lane roads in the world by a long shot. Wow. Well, my, no my friend lives in Philadelphia. He lives in Philadelphia, and we're supposed to go down there and do something in, in, in Philadelphia, like Fletcher Street area. And he says, Yeah, it's bad. You go, it could be worse than Mexico. You know what I mean? He goes, yeah. There's some stuff going on down there. I mean, yeah. there's stuff going on everywhere. So it's like, I mean, I've <clears throat> it's been years since I've been down there fishing and stuff, but we we never had any issues. We got we've been pulled over by the federales or out in the middle of nowhere. We're outside of the Bahia de Los Angeles, which is a little bay town. And, and we get out there. Yeah, spectacular. Camped out there, it's beautiful. And but out in the middle of nowhere, there's the federales, they've got luminaries in the in the paper bags with candles as their truck stop or their car stop we roll up we've got all this fishing equipment we're we've been drinking for days and it's only been one day that we we're in the truck um but we're like oh shit we're in deep kimchi here and uh they nothing they looked at our stuff they said where are you going we told them on your way no problem I think it's when you create some of the problems is when the problems happen, right? That's exactly right. I mean, that's <clears> just like that most places, you know, especially yeah. down there. They're not, you know, they want you to, they want Americans to come down, spend their money, have a good time, and then go the fuck home. Tell their friends and then come back and do it again. 
But I will tell you, in Mazatlan, I was detained. This is part of the Chip 2 story. But they they thought there was a guy in, in front of us that turned around and looked at us. There were some cops behind us. And they said they pulled me and my buddy over to the side. We were walking. They pulled us to the side and said, uh, you were trying to buy cocaine from that dude. And we're like, what? We, we don't even speak Spanish. Like, what are you talking about? You don't have to speak Spanish like, to get cocaine. I know. Coco, Coco. <laughs> <That's my favorite. laughs> so they handcuffed me and put me in this holding cell with a bunch of other drunk people. And they take my buddy back to the hotel. Luckily, we had taken all of our cash that day and put it in the safe box up at the front desk. So we had like $30 of ones. Don't ask me why we had $30 of ones either, or $100 of ones. I don't have to ask you why you had $30 of ones. <laughs> <laughs> and so they took that money, but they came back, and they that's when they finally released me. And it was like, you just went and got $100 from two. We were, at the time, we were 19 years old. Like, you just stole from two guys for 100 bucks. Did that really make your night? And that's the worst problem I've ever had there. Yeah, it did make their night. Yeah, it did. For sure. It did make their night. Yeah, I mean, we, I had some buddies that didn't quite get detained, but they showed up in the back of the Federales next to the machine guns. Uh, and our buddy Ruley, you know, gave the cops $20 and got all three of them out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just like traveling in America or anywhere, it helps to like, meet somebody local, you know, like make a connection with somebody who knows the area. Right. Right. They can tell you where is a good place to go that can help you out in a bind. I mean, I try and travel like that. If I'm going to stay someplace, I don't know very well. I try before I get too crazy. I make sure that somebody local is on my team, you know? Right. And that helps a lot. hundred percent. I like that. That's for sure. One dollar tacos. Well, have, I, you, have you ever had the wrapped uh, hot dog, bacon hot dog off the street vendor? No. No, I don't go to Good, Mexico no. and eat hot dogs. <laughs> I'm just telling you, they're all over the place. I mean, I, when I go to when I go to the Baja, I pretty much eat ceviche exclusively. Like, literally, ceviche the whole time I'm there. I love it. Nice, nice. Well, we got to go. Actually, I'm already I'm planning a Baja trip right now. You uh, are. End of April. Yeah. When? When did you say? End of April. End, end of, of April. April. And what are you going to be riding? Yeah. What bike Not would you sure take? Yet. Not surprise. sure yet. Surprise. Yeah. Uh -huh. Surprise, yeah. surprise. But I'm probably going to start up there. Probably going to come to California first. So I'll, I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop on that. What do we have on our April board, on our ride board? Fucking so cancel it. <laughs> uh, actually, in April, we have the uh, Justin and Maggie. They're going to do the BDR, and we're going to do the 666 highway. <clears throat> From uh, Holbrook down to Marenzi or or whatever, we should just keep Where going and going to Mexico, California, Arizona, Arizona, uh, Arizona, Arizona, New Mexico border area. Gotcha. If you look up the Devil's Highway, it's yeah, those BDRs it used to be titled fun. the six six six. Yeah, really cool highway. <clears throat> so you'll have to keep us abreast of those about plans. You did the loneliest highway this year. Yeah, we did. And we did it in what we thought was going to be decent. We knew it would be a little bit chilly, but not freezing. So we were in 14 degree weather doing 90 miles an hour at night. And it was, Josh was like this. He was just frozen, you know. Great run though. But it was, it was fantastic. It was snow on the ground and the, the way the light was hitting everything. It was just for three days. It was just awesome the roads were dry and fine but the snow yeah. everything about it was just this white it was really cool wow yeah riding with snow around you at night is fucking miserable but it is beautiful yeah beautiful even the next day with the just the way the sun was hitting the because it it hadn't 
snowed for maybe a week, so it was all crystallized. You know what I mean? And you get that bounce in the light. Oh, yeah, it coming melted off the, and then the refroze, so it was like a – Yeah, just spectacular. Had that crust on the top. Yep. It was yeah, a I great trip. In, I mean, during the – We did that in I January. Did it in August. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I keep talking when you guys are talking. Uh, you you got to do it in the winter. I did it in August. Yeah. And uh, I the, so the Pony Express Trail kind of runs parallel to the Highway 50 for a lot of the ways. So I was going off road, riding on that, and then jumping on to get fuel. Or did you guys go to uh, what's that place called? Something Station? With the burgers, Middle Gate Station on Highway 50. No. Oh, dude. It, that place had some eat? of the best fucking burgers ever. We People told us that, too. That, I think we were looking out for it. That was before that town. Ely. E no, not Ely. Before the town with that Fallon. white building. Yeah, Fallon. And we just must have flown right by it. We went into Yeah, like if you really guys are riding around farm. at night, this yeah. place is like oh. off the road a ways. There's not much. There's three letters lit up. B A R. That's it. Well, we didn't. We the only night riding we did was from Ve when we left Las Vegas, and we were cruising up. We got in late at night, and that was the coldest time. The next day it was all daylight on our gotcha. run across the fifty. I mean, the next day it was like thirty-five, and it felt top notch. It was pretty good. Right. Wow. But I, I, think, I rode to I California one time Go. on my chopper. And when I left my house, it was 16 degrees. And kickstarting a fucking panhead at 16 degrees. I was stopping like every 30 miles and getting fucking coffee at a gas station, even though I didn't need gas. <laughs> I think I made it. I made it to Big Springs and stayed in some big haunted hotel. The next morning, it was like 14 degrees when I went to start my bike up. Uh, luckily, I got a guy who's really good at building motors, so it wasn't as difficult as it sounds. But I rode all the way out to L.A. I think that was in 19. No? Yeah, that was in 19. Wow. In December. What's, what's What do you give, like 80 miles on a fill-up on your pan head? Yeah, I can go – like if – you know the conditions are right. I can go a hundred. I got two point four gallons and wow. a fucking well tuned motor. So I'm looking at someone did tell us to go to. You're talking about visit. It's just outside of Fallon, and it's that middle yeah. station, Middlegate Station. So we missed that. I know we were trying to look for it, but. Uh, we ate in a little small town just outside of Fallon as well that um, I think was some of the finest small town food we've ever had. This lady, her she's the chef. She's the owner. She's a, and oddly enough, some guy rolled by and saw our bikes out front. He stopped in. His brother watches us, turned him on to us, and it's her boyfriend. <laughs> so we had this whole interview with them, but she just made – all that love that she portrayed is in her food, and we just we felt that it was great. But yeah, next time we'll have to do that burger because I just looked at the picture and it's like this big. Well, that's yeah, they have like one of those fucking you know things where you eat the burger in 30 minutes, you get a fucking t-shirt or something, and it's supposed to be really <laughs> spicy. Uh, I was just like, take all that spicy shit and put it on a single fucking patty bacon cheeseburger, and it was amazing. Wow. Hey, so what's next for you, man? You you uh, burnt the paint off your wood stove? I did. It's ready. I'm going to be putting that in the house maybe tomorrow evening or sometime this weekend. That'll be nice. Uh, and then uh, Christmas. You yeah. know, I got some Christmas. I'm going to go down to Metairie. My motor guy has one of the best fucking Christmas parties ever outside of New Orleans. And it's just a bunch of seafood, crabs, oysters, shrimp, all the late. I mean, he just opens up his machine shop and everybody just brings food in and is setting it down on the mills and the engine tables. And it's going to be a sweet party. It always is. And then my now buddy Oliver Pett is a uh, – no, this is not a family party. 
Uh, but uh, then my buddy Oliver Peck has a, a Christmas party. It's a charity, like a, I mean, it's a fucking black tie affair. His wife cooks up a bunch of amazing food. It's all vegan, which is weird, but it's still amazing. And then he has like this poker company come in and they fill this bar up with blackjack tables, craps, uh, everything. And then you play play poker and they have a bunch of prizes you can win and all the money goes to a charity to help kids out for the holidays. And Love uh, it. yeah, those, both those parties will be a lot of fun. I just well, got a I new think- custom suit made in Catman do to wear to the party. It's fucking wilder <laughs> than the last one I got made. That's awesome. Well, I, I got to tell you, the wood stove brings back memories for me. That's how we heated our house in the winter times in Salt Lake city. So all summer we'd go out and find, you know, had the wood permits, get the wood, chop it up, split it, put it in our wood shed. And then that's the winters were me carrying wood, filling the wood box. And my dad was a, a really good craftsman and he made his own wood stove. He, you know, and it had a built-in fan to it so it could blow out. The, he had this l- layering of where the heat and the smoke goes through and a fan and it would just blow hot air all day long all night long it was beautiful where is that that's uh it's sitting in the top of my mom's garage aha uh-huh. so you still have it yeah but we like old pot bellies and all that stuff they're they're great a lot you know. fellas yeah you lost us we gone oh there he goes well Good news. That's an well, hour and nine minutes. If he's if he's gone, he's not forgotten. He's not forgotten. What a what a character. Saw some great uh, comments on there. Some funny, good stuff with people saying, and they could listen to this all night. Yep. Yeah. It looks like he's gone. The good news is his audio was working the whole time. Yes. Even if his video was breaking up, only a few times. Yeah. And when yeah. We, when we put this on Spotify after the fact, it should be all clear, all good. So good. Well, good. we'll call him back after we close here, but. Another great guest. We'll, we'll tell him when he gets back on. He's probably watching us now. That's how we cut off gas from we're done. <laughs> so, <laughs> Josh, you, you boys button. like Mexico? You want to go on the 2024 peyote chopper run? I'm kind of down. I'm not doing the peyote, but I'll certainly <laughs> run down to Mexico. I don't know. We I'd got a full to schedule, guys. We're yeah. Gonna have to keep, to no. our, keep to our road. road you heard the man cancel some shit. Maybe Maggie and Justin will want to go with this. Right. Oh my God! You know that could be cool. So uh, hey, look, we got a we got a full December coming up. We may uh, Josh is going to be uh, down and out for a little bit, but uh, you know we still have content for you. Oh, oh our man, the man himself is, is back? back. There he is, living dangerous. What happened? You just your phone explode? Can you hear us? I don't know what's going on. All right. We'll call you back. I can barely hear you. My wife pulled up, and for some reason, that whatever it is. She probably connected to her car. Probably connected in her car, Dan. Oh, that could be it. sound like fucking robots. (laughs) Stay with us for a minute. We're going to close out and then uh, hang tight for a sec. So, yeah, we'll have a... Pretty jam-packed December as far as travel, some uh, time off in a way. We might, we're might we going to plan on putting out some shorter videos later in the month when we might not have a full-length thing. We're, we're going to st- finish off the year. Oh, yeah. We still have, uh, man, the white balance on this. It's making me look real red. Um, I am red. But, yeah, we'll have tons of cool stuff. Part two of our top rides is coming out, hopefully, more than likely this week. It's coming week. I mean, so. that... I enjoyed that. If you haven't seen that, go back and look at it. That was great. We had fun. Yeah. Laura had one fun of my favorites it. of all time. Lauren dug it. So I hope part two is would be great if it was next week. But if it's not, it'll be. The I next think it week. will be. Well, we'll be all right. Yeah. So we got some cool stuff coming. Stay tuned um, to it. And we got a full year. We got some exciting stuff happening next year. And some of it's even going to be a surprise to us. So hey, if you don't mind, go out to the Harley app. 
sign up for the the group that says Two Lane Life. Watch our mile crushing series. Um, it's an app that you can use to look at events, plan events, plan rides, meet friends, and uh, yeah, I mean it. It's got our content on it, so it's pretty cool. So, but it's a good usable app too. Yeah, definitely. You know. So let's uh, let's sign off here, you guys. TwoLaneLife.com. Pick us up. Get some uh, holiday gifts for the loved ones. We offer gift cards and all that good stuff. So 2024, you guys, come with Yo. us because uh, it's going to be good. And we'll see you down the road. See you down the road.